ప్లాన్ అది ప్రెసెంటేషన్ మోడ్ లో పెట్టండి పెద్దది కొంతమంది టీచర్స్ రాలేదు హలో ఎవ్రీవన్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ ఐ యూ హియర్ ఇన్ ద క్లాస్ మ్యామ్ మాట్లాడుతుంటే స్వీట్ ఉంది నిద్ర వస్తుంది అని అనుకుంటున్నారు బాబు కొంతమంది కొంచెం గట్టిగా అరవాలా thank you thank you for your patient listening right so we start with our topic which is e content development <coughs> so until now i was just giving you uh, some introduction to e content like what can be the important aspects which you can think of while uh, taking moocs or Uh, sharing e content then how you approach to this and what is our role and how it is important in development of the course or some content and sharing then how it is helpful to the students or the society on the whole so all these things i'll be touching right now so let's go to the next slide please so we start with the phases of e content development so we know how to develop we know what is that content how we share and why we share why it is important all these things but there are certain phases where you start thinking what is the topic first of all and then how much can be developed as e content or how much can be uh, put electronically and then how do we share it so everything is is a phase like you start one by one step by one then so step one will be the analysis analysis of what analysis of the topic a subject or the course we call this days we don't call it as paper we call it as course so course can be sometimes uh, only one unit or maybe like few topics like a diploma like a certificate course okay or a degree so it, the course can be according to what what you are offering and that course has to undergo a proper analysis and how much can you put your creativity into that or before putting it into online airing it what has to be done what is that you need to focus so proper analysis of the topic of the subject the course has to be done then after analyzing it the second part will be design so design so are you interested in designing yeah i i have seen many female teachers here i am also a female teacher but i have seen their uh, designer sarees and blouses so i've been watching while taking a tea yes it is very impressive so as a teacher presenting ourselves is very important 
everybody has to present themselves but we teachers are public figures do you know that i was telling somebody that uh, she was asking me one of the professors are bindu mesha tumhe dekhti ho re ye kya hai wo kya hai ye lagate wo lagate we have to present ourselves no ma'am we are public figures so that's all who is the public figure she was still so it's we how yes you always meet students you are always outside you are always approachable everybody sees you you are not sitting in the house it's not only your family members who are seeing you there are representatives of several families <laughs> there are representatives of several families which are who are watching so when they watch you you have to be presentable so it is the same with the e content that not only designing our dresses or our uh, wardrobes we have to design what kind of uh, ppts we are sharing what kind of videos we are sharing how much audio we are sharing this is very much important why you might think if my uh, subject is super good i have lot of knowledge then i can do it uh, they will watch it's their fortune they are watching my video but who knows you and in the first hand who knows you if you have a tag of some institution automatically okay you will get a little bit of reputation but still you know there are several people from iits and central universities whom you don't know if somebody tells some name we are like sorry i don't know. even my own subject i don't know why because they do not present themselves well in the public they don't do that they're not for that they think research is our uh, main core area i'm doing that i'm publishing a lot so i don't need to present the public but as a teacher researchers there are research institutions they do that job our institutions are primary focus will be on education teaching not research research is secondary it is mandatory but it is secondary teaching will be the first priority so while you are teaching while you are sharing the content how you design it is very very important because you design in such a way that first of all the cover is interesting they will like it okay the title seems interesting or the title is leading to so many other topics i mean it's it's good for the heading it is very good like if i say um environment so environment in environment there will be several other topics it is understandable but if i say some i take some bacteria name and i put that name as topic and tell me how many audience will try to watch that or read that that is also considerable uh, as a part of environment but yet it is very specific so the topic is not telling you that it is going to cover several other aspects of this so why choosing the title or the topic or you design your uh, content in such a way you start with your title heading at the cover first of all you will have a thumbnail for your e content okay this we call it as thumbnails that's like the cover page so you have a cover slide and from there even if it will stop yeah it will stop okay so design uh, of of your uh, content what you are sharing is uh, very important in the primary stage not only analysis then you go with the design and then you start development so development will be as per the design first you have a design model and then you go with the development you know you might have seen several brochures with uh, constructions you have seen right 
people, even if you don't like, they'll come and share the brochures with you. Ma'am, you buy this. We have a new venture. We are going to do this. We'll give you offer. We'll give EMIs. We'll give rent. They'll give you several designs. So you look at the design and sometimes we feel impressive with that. We don't know how it is going to be constructed, but we look at the design of the building, the elevation part or the uh, you have this foundation part, the structure, all these things. So design itself tells so much and they start according to that. They look at the design and they start developing it in the same way. So when you find it at the final phase, you see it is same as what is shown in the design. So before you develop something, design is very, very important. So because anybody starts building over that design. So we also start building over the design. And now in development, so what, what should we do for development? So development, as I told you, we can't just do something like a TikTok video. It's not possible. I mean, possible to do, but as a teacher, we cannot share such kind of things. Adding creativity and making it interesting is different. But making it like a TikTok video is not acceptable in certain areas. So there are certain areas you cannot do like that. For that, you need certain tools, certain specific tools where you can develop your content in a proper way, like the virtual labs. So have you access to virtual labs by Amruta Vidya Pitam or the IIT Paragpur? So they have developed virtual labs according to the needs of the graduate students. So if you see, I, I have seen this uh, some biology labs I have seen and some physics labs also I have seen. They're so nice. So it, it makes us feel as if we are doing it in reality. You move the cursor, you know, catch hold of the pipette, then view it, some solution, add one by one, drop by drop. There's a lot of air blowing in that. That's why you're getting disturbance, I guess, right? Okay. Right. So now it's okay, ma'am? No, right. So during the development, we have to look into the practicality of what we are doing. Online, virtually, you can produce anything like the graphics, you know, graphics in movies. Right, you have seen, have you seen Bahubali? Have you seen the graphics? Even if you see Marvel stories, the, uh, you know, English movies also, many of the movies, they have lot of graphics in there. Nothing is real. So in reality, it's not feasible also. Many things are not feasible. So if we are capable of handling some application and producing something which is not feasible in reality, then that's a mere waste again. So we have to keep a connection with the reality, with the real lab, with the real world. And I told you, you have to stand in the shoes of your student. Because I know how to do it. I can't expect everybody to know it. But still, you can make the other person to understand it. You know something new, you can make your child understand it. Like as I told you, the virtual lab. There is certain equipment which is not available with us or you cannot operate. Physically, you can't allow everybody to operate like the Raman instrument. If I say it is costing around four crores. Then I don't allow my students to come and touch that instrument, do the work on their own, because if I have to go for maintenance, it is more than one and a half lakh each time. Who can afford all such money? That's why. I, I would be interested in developing a virtual lab to handle that instrument. And I'll make the child understand how to operate it, what could be the possible inputs and possible outputs. So this kind of uh, idea where we try to live in the reality, where we try to connect the reality to virtual world is in the hands of the teacher. So how they think, how they uh, design that and how they develop it. So we have to develop that. It's not easy. So Raman 
uh, if it is going to work, maybe you can make a video of that. So you go physically, turn it on, record that properly. The machine will be running and there will be a lot of noise. So you need to do a lot of editing and then give voice over for each and every button there, for each and every programming code there. And you will have to take which material you are uh, taking for the experiment, then how much concentration you are putting, what, what is the output spectrum you are getting, then how are you taking the absorbent spectra, etc., etc. So this is a practical knowledge which we are trying to give. So giving it in virtual uh, mode is also OK. And again, you record this. And you share it as e content. How to operate that device? So that's in real. So the students understand it much better. Even if you are doing it in virtual lab, you know, they click this, click that, click that, click that is not so great. You show it. This is the real machine. This is how I'm going to operate. They will keep it in their mind. So learning becomes more easy in this way. So here we have to think properly our critical thinking also comes into picture what kind of tools i am using or how am i making the content whether this one or this one so we have to have a bias for it then during development what is needed is the tools what are the tools you need you need a camera you need a uh, if you need a okay uh, like uh, like a theater a stage a table some mic or some background or maybe some audio visuals you need some content to be displayed some helpers so we have to check all that so the in the development phase we see for all this so we have the course content with us so we have designed it properly we have all the sheets with us so that we we know how to explain it we read it while sharing the content, if you have seen this LCM video, that guy is not talking as I do. Like talking, stopping for some time, asking. No, that he doesn't do that. He will be monotonous, point to point. He has a script there, opposite to him, and he reads that. Because he cannot do mistakes. Even if there is a mistake, he will record it again. He will remove that recording. He will add this and then he will send. So while recording a video, there are certain things which have to be taken care. I'll tell you that as well. But for development, first we start with the course. What is the course main uh, topics? Then we create the content like we elaborate everything properly. And how much has to be delivered online? Or what, what are the things to be delivered online? We have everything written. We can't sit in front of camera and like say, uh, suppose you can't do that. People give comments. These days it's very easy. You know, throwing negative comments, bullying has become very easy. And that will disturb our mind again. We may think like, why should I create anything? Why should I upload? OK, let me delete it. That's how we feel discouraged. So to avoid all such things, these are the measures to be taken as a teacher. So development for that content, then the equipment needed and what is the kind of method we are trying to approach? So which method and what way? We are uh, trying to reach the students, how we are sharing it. All these things have to be kept in mind. So we do all that we have developed. Then now it's the time of testing. So you have test. You should test and retest. Do it two times, three times. If possible, show it to others also. It's better you show it to somebody who always criticizes you. Can you please give me some feedback on this? You have to ask like this. Don't say crit criticize this. Say. Can you help me or some? Can you give me some suggestions on this? And they will give you perfect suggestions. You now the slide should not be like this. Uh, this should not be like that. You know, after uh, making my PPT, I share it with my husband. <laughs> See, <laughs> because he's he he's very much ready to criticize me. Like you are doing this, you are doing that. So if my PPT is not good, he will say like 
ah you this is clumsy this picture is not good this is going that way this way so you need people like that in your life it's, it's a big support okay that's first for fun please don't take it serious uh, go with analysis uh, testing first you you test for yourself you you run you run that and then once you're happy you ask somebody else also to watch that maybe two or three people you can ask not only one person so once they also say it is good then you can go with implementation but if somebody gives you some suggestion if it is possible you do it if it is not possible don't try to incorporate that somebody might give you some some suggestion which you cannot do and then you will be breaking your head like how am i going to do this you don't know how to do graphics and somebody says can't you show this as graphics they will they will say and then you will start breaking head like shall i learn now graphics or shall i hire somebody with graphics or uh, shall i download this free graphics app and then then do this and then how am i mixing all these things cutting this that buying new equipment it's all a hassle so don't don't try to please everyone but take suggestions which are possible which are feasible so in testing phase this is very important to check what are the things you can add after testing so if the testing is good there's no mistake then fine then you go with the implementation part so implementation part how do you implement put it on youtube you want to put it on youtube that's the easiest thing you can do because it's a free account free google account free youtube account you can just upload your video onto youtube so after uploading has it gone properly or not is it like only half video has been uploaded half video is not uploaded the audio subtitles video subtitles they are all coming properly or not so language is it correct the video ratio is cor coming correct resolution is coming correct or not everything you have to check before before sending the link with everyone there's a preview option you need not put it in public then and there itself even after uploading on to youtube you can check whether everything is working properly and then when you feel yes everything is going well thumbnails are good cover is good all good share the link with your near and dear you just put it in your whatsapp status and then soon you will get at least 50 views for your video and then slowly if the video is good it will just become viral you have seen that right youtube going viral some videos going viral yeah you make a mistake in that then your video also becomes viral that's the danger it's a warning you can take it as a warning if you don't watch it properly you don't test it properly before publishing it virtually anything can happen something else also can mix with this while you are uploading uh, while you are mixing your video you are editing something else can add into that or maybe there can be a bit somewhere in the middle like you are talking casually to somebody or you are shouting and then that is also recorded you did not check it properly it goes and then that clip will become so viral like like savior have you seen this savior memes in facebook do you know no no so his name is savior x a v i e r i think from kerala so he just commented somewhere uh, hilariously and then his name has become a um, icon for memes right now so if somebody wants to uh, joke on something they just put the name xavier and then they write the meme caption so it's becoming viral why because so like for infamous reasons so e content it's more useful but if you don't watch it properly don't test it properly it will make you viral overnight so you have to be very careful with that that's why i tell you do testing retesting 
always you have to go with retesting and don't trust anybody don't trust anybody on this earth you don't leave you can't leave your video with somebody just like that and say upload no you have to check your video then even after uploading you have to check again confirm and the account should be with you not with somebody else remember if somebody else has the login details and all this that video can be edited and something else can be added to that so you will you will be blamed for whatever is happening it can be removed from that site as well or some uh, unwanted things also can be uploaded so your video platforms your uh, uh, social media networks you shouldn't give password to anybody just to avoid mishaps with your e content especially when it is educational purpose and you are sharing it with students for knowledge you have to be very careful what kind of content is being shared so for that we need to see how it is being implemented and then for that testing and retesting is very very important so at last it is like evaluation so for evaluation if it you are giving for mocks then yes you have evaluation feedback certainly but if it is not with mock then how do you evaluate that so you if you activate comments section people start commenting below like uh, sir can you prepare so and so topic or can you add this or uh, there was a topic which i did not understand in the middle can you please explain that for me so they give a lot of comments so taking comments is also like uh, taking feedback and then you evaluate your video basing on that how many students uh, have been beneficial with that and how many uh, subscribers are there for your channel right now and how many people have followed it how many people have liked it how many people have disliked it so you start self evaluation with the help of that if it is on social media and all and again you edit it so these are the phases you can slowly follow yes ma'am So in both ways, ma'am, like where you are sharing, if you are sharing this content with MOOCs or for some course specially, then you evaluate the students how much they have learned, and then you want to change the content or maybe you can also give certificates and all. But if it is only content sharing, then you evaluate your own video and you say like, okay, uh, this is what I can. Uh, add or I can delete or I can make the child read or I, you can also add something in addition uh, for uh, like the linked videos or the linked resources you can give to them. So it depends on what uh, kind of things you are sharing. But if you say only on social media or YouTube you are sharing, then it is evaluation of your own content, not the student. So next slide, ma'am. So for e-content development also, we have the famous four quadrant model, which is quadrant one, which is e-text, quadrant two, self-learning through audios or videos, quadrant three, which is uh, learn more or web resources through supplementary materials, and quadrant four, which is self-assessment. So uh, I'm not talking about MOOCs here because we don't say about certificates and all. We are only telling about learning. So how the child learns and how our content is helpful to the student or to the learner, so anybody. So we call learner only. So we are telling the learner centric model here again, LCM. We are interested in the learner, what they want, how they want, and what could be the possible output everything first we have to assess and then we start doing this now in quadrant one it is uh, e text e text text is text if it is book it is textbook if it is online it is e text so you can type in 
whatever way you like, whatever app you have, whatever tool you have. I'll show you few of the tools which are available and how you can do with that. So all these things which is electronically available is all E. And why we say only E content, everything is available, right? So yes, everything is available. That is also E content. But what you develop is learner specific content. You search on Google, you have heaps of websites coming up. You search something like I say Charminar. Do you think only Charminar image comes and then history of Charminar comes there? No, just type and see what all comes. You will get Charminar Express, Charminar cigarettes, Charminar in the news, some murder. Everything pops up. So you have to filter like what content you have. Okay, you go to advanced settings and you can filter. That's a different story. But that's not what the learner wants. So our learner wants something else which only you know. Right? Google doesn't know what the what the specific learner wants. Google knows to give whatever it knows. Whatever is available in the server database, it will just throw it out and then you pick what you want. That's why people have shifted towards. Yes, somebody is telling. Yes, chat GPT. So chat GPT is now slowly taking over. Since its uh, inception, chat GPT, you can see the increase in the number of users, enormous increase in the number of users. It's like this, a steep growth. Sir? Yeah. So the growth indicates the interest of the browsers, uh, I mean browsing people. What they want, they get everything in Google, but the Google is the synonym for search. Am I right? We don't say search it, we say Google it. But yet, why people are going to chat GPT? Because that is what we want. I mean, as a learner, I would like to learn about some topic Specifically, I don't want to learn about that Charminar cigarettes and Charminar uh, factory or something else. I want to learn about Charminar history or maybe construction, something like that. So I want to be very specific. So learner centric model. This is something like that. So we don't want a plagiarized one. We don't want advertisements. We don't want. Uh, I mean, we don't have time to choose time to pick. And also we don't have the knowledge to know which one is correct and which one is not correct. But sometimes chat GPT also gives wrong answers. Do you know that? OK, so if you don't know much about that chat GPT, you can read the instructions given on the first page. It will tell the answers given can be based on the previous answers and they might not be appropriate or correct relevant. They will give this disclaimer in first hand. So if we don't know that. We copy and then paste and we send it. OK, for us we are not going to lose any certificate, but for students it's a damage. Or if somebody is applying for uh, some interview or they are trying to write a project thesis or dissertation, all these things. And for them also, it's a problem. So here, artificial intelligence taking over is one side and then there are certain drawbacks also. So you have to understand as a teacher, we have to know what is that. And also, as I said, we have to know what the learner wants, what our student wants, and we should let them know this is this app which helps you like this. This is this app which has these disadvantages. This is how you can use it properly, positively. And these are the things which you can avoid. So first have a knowledge of that and then you go with that. So e-text e is all available on the internet and that text, ChatGPT is giving you such kind of text for us to read. 
so you also can share such kind of text with your students so i'll give you the several tools which are helpful so not only here while making videos also you can add some text the video was going on the lcm model 1 he was talking and there was a lot of text displayed behind if you have seen so that is also insertion of text in videos and ppts and images so we have several tools for that okay then self learning which is audio video model we all learn through that so in uh, during pandemic uh, people might have learned lot of new recipes by watching youtube right so there will be many people who did that even i also did i learned few things my daughter became a chef with youtube so she cooks everything within 10 minutes even now you ask something she will turn on that youtube and she will cook it in 10 minutes so if it is a simple thing she will do if it is a very big no no she is not happy doing that but youtube has taught her so it's like self learning you don't need anybody to come and tell like do this do that they learn it by themselves so videos tell so much they teach so much they are very much helpful for learning so we as teachers knowing all these things we have to create content in such a way that our videos are also self learning our students understand each and everything so as i told you think like the student so if it is the student what kind of questions he will get in his mind what are the doubts he will have how he wants this to be approached so you have to think in that lines okay so i'll go to the next slide ma'am next slide please so there are e content development programs like the first one is nptel national program on technology education learning nptel which is very popular so even in swayam also you can see nptel programs on swayam platform you will see several nptel programs or so the next comes the cec ugc consortium for educational communication cec so we see so many videos with either nptel tag or cec tag so these are the courses offered by them those institutions those uh, are the sponsored projects they will advertise and through them you can do this that's one way or ugc offers few times then you get funding and you do it that's other way or you yourself can offer more courses that's uh, the third method which you can do so whatever you are interested you can do that so if you if you are not into making money then you can just go through youtube or you can create your own website and put lot of resources in there so if you have heard uh, professor k srinivas from nepa you might have heard him right so he gives his web page professor k srinivas dot in is his uh, web page he has put lot of resources in that lot of online content is available so much is there if you open his web page he is just offering everything for free he has that interest he is sharing the content and he is not putting in swayam or anything no nptel no cec nothing he has put it on his own which is useful for thousands of teachers so even i watch his uh videos sometimes i attend his classes also he shares me the link generously so sometimes i go into his class and then i attend that so you don't need an institutional tag for sharing your e content this is what i want to tell that's one such example which is the personal website you can go through that then again we have swayam or uh, mooc courses the study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds so people might think this is for young people so we don't need to do that but whoever is learning a learner is always young and there's no limit for learning it's never too late to learn that's a proverb we have so even if we are like 80 or 90 and we have the energy to learn yes you have to learn you can learn no worries so anybody can learn anybody can enroll and anybody can watch them so you have several platforms where the content is available you can learn you don't need any certificate for that you just learn you just learn you leave it you don't need to take an exam 
if you don't have a certificate will somebody say that okay you don't have the knowledge you don't know anything oh knowledge you can share it or else it will be for you it might be useful for you for your children for your students somebody so this platforms like swayam edx coursera udemy etc etc they are all helpful for everybody to learn so that's the power of e content so you understand the power already so if somebody is interested in making money they can go with uh, youtube videos where you will have so many likes so many shares so you will have thousands or millions of likes and shares automatically you will get some money from youtube that's another way or you can sell the content to somebody like uh, you make ppts and you can share it with uh, slideshare.net pptplayer.net so there are certain websites where you will share this you can sell your e content they will give you money but they will have the copyright with them you will not have any rights because they are paying you they will take the copyrights so these are the other methods by which you can use but for us as teachers our primary motto will be sharing the knowledge so you can do it through your social networking pages also you can create video you can put the link share it with your students if you don't want it in youtube you can put the video in your drive in your google drive share the link with others that is accessible to everyone you can do that also if you are not interested in uh, likes and shares and all this and you want to keep it little bit private don't want to, to share it with everybody then you can do this also ma'am next so uh, going to the other part for in e content which is the typology of video production i'll just show you a few pictures and then move on to the four coordinates next slide ma'am so see the first slide what do you see there is one one model which is talking head like we saw in the lcm video so there was a head so head was there and the head was talking with with some background pictures and the next one is presentation slides with voice over so slides will be moving and then somebody will be talking like here if somebody is recording this they will see the slides are moving and i am talking the voice will be recorded so it's like giving voice over to your presentation even you also can do you can play your ppt you can just give a voice over you don't need to put your video you don't need to put your voice uh, sorry uh, your head there only your voice can be recorded it will be like voice over it will be going that's one style you can see there how the ppt is there it you'll just play the ppt then again picture in picture picture in picture means one picture is coming up and then you have another picture into that so it's like uh, on the background you have uh, your ppt and you have a small section where your image is visible you can see that so that goes in the zoom meetings if you record a zoom video then your video will come as picture in picture so that is one style so we have like different styles how you can uh, create this uh, e content such models next slide ma'am actual paper or whiteboard the classroom lecture screen cast recorded seminar animation and then interview see how many different models are there right can you see them as different models you can use any of this the ultimate goal is sharing what the learner wants what they like right so if somebody is very much interested to uh, listen more about ipl and then three people are sitting there and talking about uh, what could be the next move in 2028 elections will anybody be interested in that i am very sure the channel will get 
thousands of calls. What nonsense you are telecasting. <laughs> Stop it right now and show IPL. They'll say there will be people who go and beat the uh, glasses of the studio also. People will be outrageous. So you have to deliver what what they want. So you conduct an interview. Fine, you talk what is uh, important to that, what is relevant to that. You can share like the ISRO project. Some satellite is going. They can talk. You you will see that the TV will be telecasting uh, two or three people. One scientist from ISRO, uh, one uh, normal person or one maybe uh, a person who is atheist and some maybe some uh, uh, what you say a person doing all this uh, some chantings and all. Yeah, they will sit there and there will be a person anchor asking all questions. Now, <laughs> yeah. Sir, you can ask your Sir, you can ask your question now. He can post the question in chat box so that you can write it. Yeah, so the kind of interview is like also relevant and it's also a, a discussion platform, but yet it is something which is sent as electronic content. But if it is regarding the subject, so there can be a nice healthy discussion. So I had something like this. So once um, they invited me to um, the government uh, TV station, which was located in Ambedkar University. So they there they were asking us to tell something about electricity, some important concepts about electricity and also light. So yeah, Mana TV. So we were there sitting, we were talking, and there was one teacher asking questions to us like, what what is this? What is that or how it happens and all this and audience were all teachers. They were watching this channel and they were asking on telephone over telephone. They were asking questions and we were answering. So our PPT was being played. We were talking. It was a live session and somebody else was asking questions. It was all interactive and people were learning. So that's a that's one kind of model and it is all recorded. It can be displayed. Later also it will be there stored with them with Mana TV people and they will give it to the teacher so that they can play it later. So this is one different model. Not every model uh, is like the YouTube thing or the Swayam thing. So we have all these models. If you see animations, you know, we have screencasts. Uh, we have actual board also like somebody, some senior professor is there. He's not comfortable using Zoom and all these things. He'll put a recorder. He will start writing there. I have seen uh, during this pandemic, I've seen one uh, news where there's a senior professor from uh, Stanford. He put one doll in the classroom, in the chair, and then he was writing on the board. He was explaining to the camera. So he was explaining to that doll, assuming that it is a student and he was explained. So he is not so comfortable in creating this animations and all this. So he is going with his routine lecture, but only thing he did was record the video. So that is also one style. So we cannot deny uh, one style saying no, no, this is not proper. This is uh, this is all outdated, etc, etc. But as a teacher, how best we can reach our students is the ultimate goal. That is the goal. And after evaluation, after assessment, you will understand everything like how best you have reached. Sometimes even if you don't reach, our students are happy searching it with somebody else, get every information and then they reproduce it. They are talented enough to do that. But here, as I told you, you will lose the connection with your students. They will not like you. They will like somebody else's classes. For political sense, we have Dr. Ali who will be giving all questions and everything. So they will be happy talking about Ali instead of me or instead of you. But if you communicate properly, if you can give the content properly, then the students will be happy talking to you, interacting with you. You know, as a teacher, what is the satisfaction for us if they come back and thank you? 
that is the gift you want it's not the salary which we get which gives us happiness salary is needed for livelihood but the satisfaction comes with the students feedback so for that only we are doing all these things so there are people who also tell me who ask me we are not circus uh, masters that we do all such kind of things why should we entertain students it's not entertaining students but why are we hired for what are we hired we are hired to take care of the needs to cater the needs of the students am i right is the institution hiring you just because of your qualification or thinking that you will take care of the students for what obviously not because we are super intelligent than millions of people out there we are hired here because of our qualification no no not like that they only see the part where they feel that okay she can talk to the students well she can make them understand well okay she is good okay let me take they'll have a demo for that sake in in one single demo nobody can understand your knowledge knowledge is like a sea you don't know the depth sometimes you can show sometimes you cannot show right all these things are there but the way the style of your teaching is what is the important criteria like are you able to deliver what the student wants this is how people assess you so if i was the uh, assessor there i will do that i will check how they are modulating their voice what is their body language how they are using the board properly are they trying to see whether the students are listening or not okay will she be able to handle this this is what are the important aspects so e content development is also a part of that area where we are trying to be learner centric we want to be student centric and what the student wants we want to cater the present day needs okay next slide so we can have conversations we can have live videos we can have a webcam capture also so these are the several uh, development methods several methods where you can have a recorded videos and for developing all these things mhrd has given several initiatives you can go to the website ministry of human resource development government of india so there we have this developing suitable pedagogical methods for vae classes intellectual calibers and research in e learning so under that you will have uh, this nptel pedagogy then if you want to go for training also you can register for that for course views also there are several things you can make nato note of that web page just a uh, next ma'am next slide sorry yeah this is the web page you can make note of this web page and uh, you you can learn you can register you can offer all these things can be done with the help of mhrd <clears throat> even the hrdcs which are uh, there they are also part of the ministry of hrd only right now mhrd so more than ugc mhrd is uh, involving in this ugc also works with the mhrd only right now that ppt is there with you no ma'am on the screen yeah so i'll i'll leave the ppt here so if somebody is interested you can take the ppt as well what was the question ma'am did they ask okay right next slide so this is the important question how are teachers important in this anybody can develop content why not if he has some skill you see in tiktok or uh, you can see in youtube videos any other videos moj is there uh, taka tak something you have several applications people create lot of content they have become millionaires also by sharing the content do you know do you know people who have become millionaires by sharing content do you know mark zuckerberg i don't know he's he ceo of facebook facebook and instagram also now 
and you know what is he doing he is sharing the content but he is not developing any content he is intelligent enough he is allowing everybody to develop content and he is putting it at one place and according to the need of the viewers he caters it so you talk something like uh, okay there is a wedding coming up am i going to wear this sari or shall i go for a designer one you talk to your friends and that is that is recorded by your phone so facebook knows it and then when you are watching a facebook page immediately an advertisement comes up like ajio fashion sale have you seen it yes so your your mobile phone is your spy it it will know what you are thinking so you will think like oh what a coincidence i was thinking about the sharara and then it has come up no it's not a coincidence it is mark zuckerberg's intelligence that he is spying everyone they know what you are browsing in your google they know what you are talking they know what you are doing sometimes the cameras are also hacked so they know they can see your room also so having mobile phone with you always is a dangerous thing sometimes try to leave it when you are in private otherwise it is heard by the world it is seen by the world so content creation it can be a third party creation also somebody else also can do that and you also can use it but with the proper copyrights so facebook is something and youtube also they don't create content somebody creates content they upload it here instagram everything is like that so they make money millions and millions and millions so they are billionaires right now so who create their own things are industrialists you know, they go they try to manufacture do this that that business but these people content is being created and it is being sold to the same audience you know like our papers so we publish our articles and then we don't give it for open access because for open access we have to pay like 1600 dollars 1500 dollars you know that's a huge money for us we don't pay he asks for a copyright form you sign it your content is sold to that person only just because we get a name on the website we sell our precious research that person if i want to read it again sometime he will ask 49 dollars for the view for the read so your own content for you to read you have to pay either for publishing you have to pay or to read also so tell me who is intelligent you or that maintenance person who is intelligent so just think over like how content is being shared through open educational resources and also through private parties or uh, through people who are commercializing it so they, these are the both aspects but thankfully there are so many people millions of people who share content through uh, cc licenses you can see they share it for free there are few people who don't even want attribution there are few people who say i want attribution but there are so many people who say we don't need any attribution just publish they are very generous so if they are generous and you are using the content i request you also to be generous and share your content for free don't put it for sale so that's that's the uh, written thing what you can do using online content next slide oh no no not this ma'am Uh, the previous one. yes so what is the role of teachers here in preparing e content i said mark zuckerberg is there he is not a teacher but still he is sharing e content with everybody making millions but we as teachers what is our role how we do that so when the teacher is talking you can see there's a, there's a certain teacher she is talking happily to the students even if you are not happy we have to put a happy face is it true many a times we have to do that that's the hard job what a teacher undergoes you know i also know that once my mom was very serious she was in hospital very very serious it's like 
almost doctors gave up on her. Uh, they said, we are not sure she will be alive or not. I, I, I did not have any leaves. I just joined the college. I did not have leaves. I was on probation. I can't take leaves. I cannot go because I'll be suspended if I do that. I'm in government uh, thing. I had to go to the class. So tears were coming, but I did not allow the tears to come out because I had to take a class. I had 60 students sitting here, all the girls. What you have to do? Just, just put everything inside. Do not allow anything. Put a smile, even if it is fake. Make the students understand what you are telling. And then leave. After that, you do whatever you want. So that pain only teacher understands. For public, you have to put this face. All others, they can say, I don't want to meet you. But for us, we can't say like that. So this teacher who is online is also doing the same thing as they do in the physical class. Because if you turn off the video and you start talking, can you imagine how students feel? Nobody will be interested. Only the PPT is running and she is talking and talking. Students will not be interested. They will turn it on. They will also sleep. They will also sleep. Sometimes if you call their name, maybe they will wake up and they say like, yes, ma'am. Or maybe somebody in the family might come and put it in the chat box like, yes, ma'am. OK, ma'am. All this happens. Right? So we know that we know we know the uh, real real time failures of a teacher. So these things. So if the teacher is available live, if the video is on, they are putting uh, some faces, gestures, you know, smile sometimes, angry sometimes. This makes the student interested in the class. They feel as if I'm seeing the teacher and they will stick on to the screen for a long time. Long time is not so long for a physical class. Also, you cannot sit long. See, uh, more than 20 minutes, we cannot take anybody's concentration physically also. Online, not more than six minutes. And now, not more than 30 seconds because of that uh, reels. Instagram reels and Facebook reels. They don't want it. If any YouTube video is going for two minutes or three minutes, you read the co comments below. This is such a waste of time. I wasted three minutes of my life. They put all those comments. They don't want. They want like start, finish. So you, you put all the content, uh, all the ingredients together. Then you say put it on the oven. A dialogue will appear and then you'll have the pudding there in the hand. There's no process in between. They'll not show you because people are not interested to watch. Even me, I'm not interested to watch all that. I'll think like, what is the output? Show me quickly. Or maybe I'll just try to slide the bar. So the teacher role is very, very important in capturing the interest, concentration of the students over our video lecture. So here, for doing all that, first he has to write the script. That's what I told you. While uh, knowing the course, you know the course and you want to write the course content. You have the content, but while delivering it online, you need some script. It has to be read. You'll put it here and you'll start reading like this. The first law of Newton states that. So and so. For example, it will be so and so. I told you, you can't say like, um, I think um, maybe. You can't do that. <laughs> I mean, you can do if you want, but it's not desirable. Nobody will like it. So, have you not prepared well? They will ask. They'll ask on face. Like, have you not prepared well? So for us as teachers, it is very important that we get prepared well. So we have to become script writers now. <laughs> we can go into movies later. Like once you know how to make all this script writing, you can try that also again. So next comes presentation. So while writing script, we have to be uh, thorough with what we are writing. It shouldn't be like copy of a textbook. 
So you read a textbook and that's your script. No, not like that. Like the bullet highlights, which I, what I gave you in PPT. So it can be like that highlights. And maybe the definition of that can be written under that so that you can put it as explanation. But you can't do it as you are reading a newspaper or as you are reading a book. That's not correct, improper. So writing script in advance for the video which you are presenting and you have to practice it like you have to read it properly, record it and see how many minutes it is going. If it is going very long. You have to cut short the script. If you think all points are important, then you have to speed up your. Uh, voice modulation like the recording. So how you do to make the video interesting? So these are the important uh, challenges that a teacher has to take up while developing e-content. Now, apart from becoming a, a circus ringmaster, now we are doing this. Direction activities also like the movie things. If you go for e-content, yes, we have to do several things. I'll show you. So don't don't worry. You are already doing it, but do it in a proper way. That's it. The next is presentation. So presentation is. Presenting yourself. Presenting the content. In the form of PPT or in the form of some text, some video or some um, some photograph, all these things. So presentation is very, very important for the uh, content. Then again, recording. Without recording, you cannot share it. So recording is mandatory and see that or you have all the mandatory tools with you. Completing the content design development, etc. Then you have to uh, institutionalize this design again. Uh, you put this in your institution. First of all, because we we are being paid by the institution, so you cannot say that. Ah, no, no, this is my private content and I'm not uh, giving this to you. I have all copyrights. You are using the. Instruments available with your lab. You are using the camera available with your university institution. You are being paid by the institution. And then you say this content I am not giving to. The institution is unfair. You cannot do that. You have to give it again. Uh, resource use for that also teachers role is very important. You should know where, what are the resources where they are available, etc. And copyrights. Whether you can take copyrights or whether it is a copyrighted project, all these things have to be taken care. Next slide. Now. So it's already one o'clock, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll just wind up in 10 minutes. Don't worry. Yeah, next slide. So these are the typical approaches for uh, uh, e content development, like topic manuscript preparation, content organization. Uh, instructional design, pedagogy, and then teaching aids, delivering the lecture next month. So all these things I have told you already, the post production video editing, then several platforms are uh, server platforms, uh, use of standard templates, then content deployment, LMS, feedback, updation, chat, answering, etc. Next slide. So this is the planning for modules. So maybe this is of your interest. You can take note of this. So how you plan your modules, how you prepare them. I'll, I'll finish in five minutes. Don't worry, please don't talk. Your talking will not make this PPT finish. My talking will make this PPT finish. So allow me to talk. <laughs> right. So. Plan, prepare and present through rehearsals. So rehearsals are very, very important. If you think you're not good enough, you can have rehearsal. You stand in front of a mirror. You can rehearse. You don't need a camera. You watch you yourself in the mirror. You start talking. You know how you are. Expressing your, you know how you're talking, but once you record it and then you listen, you understand how your voice is coming, whether you have to reduce it, uh, make it a bit higher, you stop. You know where to put the dots, how you include, conclude. Are you putting this like ah, oh, e, 
everything recorded once you listen to that you go on rehearsals that is the best part and again images videos etc etc and you have to go with the fair use policy also okay now last line i want you to read what you have to note people may compare with youtube video lessons with our lessons or standards and quality so our lesson standard or quality so quality of the image quality of the content both image resolution video resolution and also quality of the content and what is the standard we are following are we going to the school standard or the graduation standard or the high school standard higher education standard which standard are we talking whether it is worth their time this is what people want to see is it worth my time i'm watching something some for 20 minutes is it worth my time so people start comparing with the other videos so that's why we also have to watch other videos on the first hand and then see how better we can do compared to that and how we can improvise next slide so this is the important slide i wanted to show you after this i'll just close so facing the camera and recording so many people have the fear for this facing the camera even i stand in front of camera for first 2 3 minutes i feel so anxious nervous and then it starts i start sweating and sometimes my voice also shakes so there's a unknown feeling like am i going to do it better correct is it correct is the face looking uh, good pretty <laughs> everything comes in the brain and then we we'll, we get lost for some time so that's why initially don't put it online turn on the camera but don't put it online for some time you do it just like that after some time let it be on so you will be comfortable after 4 or 5 minutes you will be comfortable you will be going going smoothly so there will be a starting trouble starting hiccup for everybody so i'll give you some tips if you like it you can take it next slide ma'am facing the camera and recording so these are the tips so authentic and steady explanation of the topic so having knowledge of the topic gives you more confidence and that confidence will make you successful that's the mantra you learn to gain knowledge your knowledge gives you confidence and your confidence makes you successful that's how you present in front of a camera that's how you stand in front of some audience somebody so i tell you confidence is the key and you have to be with your steady explanation of the topic you like i think uh, there are certain rules perhaps no you have to be very thorough with what you are talking no change of tone or modulation while video recording so you saw the lcm model video he was not talking like me because this is a physical class i am modulating my voice and i am behaving uh, differently just to make you feel attentive but over video you you shouldn't do that you should uh, not change the tone you should not change the modulation go through the script properly whatever you like do not record with eyes puffy or gloomy or tired so take care of your makeup do not record when you are in distress because if you are in distress there will be some word you will read it wrongly sometimes see while going on the road what is there in your brain you will read that on the boards if you have observed you will read something else it's not that but it it depends on what you are thinking so your distress your despair or your depressions condition will make you read the content wrongly script wrongly so while you are like that don't go for recording don't do not go for recording at all retakes are okay if any mistakes are committed go for retakes don't say that a emaitho okate kada a le le cheppina kada meku viral ayipothar savior laga mottham ade word ni mottham world anta tippesaru oddu check and recheck the recording do not deviate from the script explain carefully and careful about language vocabulary and phonetics that is very very important 
otherwise they'll make fun of you they start bullying you saying like <laughs> for there was one teacher of us like for sugar he was telling sugar so everybody in the class was commenting and they were bullying that teacher like sugar teacher sugar teacher is coming so everything matters See, it's not wrong but uh, students they uh, listen to all this next ma'am so these are the shortfalls if you see like the connection power supply devices for operation maintenance manpower finances everything comes into picture because without all this we can't do this e content we say e content fine but you need all these things next slide ma'am so there are several tools which i have mentioned here um i'll share the ppt as i told you you can go through the list next slide ma'am so these are the tools for text you can see ms office all these things and there's a link which i gave you you can click on the link and you can go to the other tools available you can practice next ma'am tools for pictures there are several tools so sketchbook is uh, one nice tool which i use especially because i use a macbook uh, ms paint is not completely free for me so i use sketchbook so I, I've authored three books with the help of this sketchbook. I, I drew all my diagrams with the sketchbook and uh, I Im edited images also with sketchbook. It is it was good. It was very good. Clarity is so good image clarity and you can go with the MS Office Paint. If you have a free version with you licensed version, that is very good. And these days MS Word is fully equipped with all the drawing tools. You can go with MS Word itself. I, I've drawn several diagrams with MS uh, Word and then I took a screenshot of that, then attached it to my book. So that's another way you can create images. Next, ma'am. So there are video creation tools like the Screencast-O-Matic, PresentationTube.com, SVID, Cam Studio, Webinaria, Vvideo, Screencastify. So Screencast-O-Matic is free. For 15 minutes, you can record anything, record any screen. So that will be a wonderful tool for you initially to record your videos. Next, ma'am. So there are so many tools for animation. If you are interested, you can check all this, like the Blender, tunes etc etc next ma'am and there are simulation tools if you are a science person you want to simulate something uh cosmol phys multi physics is one nice multi physics tool if you are in radiation physics then optics that is uh, a nice tool then we have sim scale also very nice next ma'am so these are the hands-on i want you to make a note and do it ma'am uh, whoever is the in charge this can be the assignment to your participants that they can use this uh, gifmaker.me or iAnimate or sim card uh, there are uh, small videos on their web pages how you can create uh, this animation you can create one using slides you you, ha you can have few images with you you can have powerpoint slides and you can make a small gif file gifs you know right they they do like running or beating hitting all these things so how to create a gif file uh, that's given there you can use any of the tools and you can create your own gif file or you can create an animation it's very easy go to the web pages and do it next ma'am so these are the lab session activities which you are if you are uh, uh, interested to do uh, if ma'am can give us assignment also you can take this the last one uh, you can use google or chat gpt to locate the oer content then uh, youtube to locate cc license videos then oer content using different sources or prepare ppt based on oers record a video using screencast-o-matic and then use the ed puzzle and integrate with classroom so these are the other activities which teachers can do or maybe you can ask two people to do one two people to do once like that you can assign jobs so that everybody gets to know what others are doing so this kind of activities so ed puzzle i think uh, ma'am has asked you to create one account already so there is one uh, nice thing with this ed puzzle last slide uh, you can integrate your ed puzzle with microsoft teams with google classroom as well so if your institution wants to integrate Edpuzzle with Google Classroom, then your IT admin has to 
install the add-on at puzzle add-on to your Google and it will pop up in your Google Classroom. You say plus click on the plus symbol. It will show you at puzzle and you can start giving assignments through at puzzle. Other ways you log in with your at puzzle and then in at puzzle you click on plus. You will have this classroom. Uh, yes, in in add content, you can add your Google Classroom. I mean, if if with that account there is a classroom, you will have all your classes displaying. You can click one of the classes, add it to this, and you can move. So this is like advancing, going beyond Google Classroom, Google LMS. So for developing e content, there is no limit at all. You can use several tools, but one which is easy, user friendly, and then not costing you more is also important because first of all, we are putting a lot of efforts, time, and then you put thousands of rupees on that. So then teacher is not happy doing that, right? We are not getting incentives firsthand. And then again, you want to spend on this tool and that tool. It's not uh, fair. So that's why I tried to give you all the free tools. You can go through my PPT, get the tools, try them, try them up. There are several practice videos uh, through which you can do all this. So Edpuzzle is the next next gen LMS compared to Google Classrooms or the Microsoft Teams, and you can combine both of this. If you go to the Edpuzzle, uh, what do you say? The help uh, in that help, there's a lot written, like how you uh, combine. In that you can just type how to combine Google Classroom with Edpuzzle and it will give you the two methods which I told you how to do with Microsoft Teams also it will give you. You can go through that, follow it and combine all your classes. You can shift to Edpuzzle. So that will be more interesting for the students getting to know new things. You also will be interested browsing. So you'll get uh, a lot of uh, time pass with the browsing. So maybe you can start doing it and happy browsing and happy creating content. So this was it. Thank you. So anything to ask maybe somebody some relevant question. I know you might be hungry, but they gave nice snacks, so I'm not so hungry. <laughs> So if there are no questions, I thank everybody for your patience listening. I, I see that many people have responded very positively. They're smiling. They were nodding their head. They were trying to reply. So I get energy from that. I've neglected all those people who were sleeping. I've not seen them. So like like the horse, you know, uh, you tie that to the eyes of the horse and it doesn't want to see. This way and that way it has to focus on the road, right? So we also focus on people who are very active and responding and we just ignore all others. So you have to be like that. Move positively. Don't worry about uh, the likes or shares. Just proceed with testing, retesting, evaluation, and then response from the uh, audience. That will make you uh, a good teacher online as well. So you are a good teacher offline, but it will make you a good teacher online if you are interested. See, if you are not interested, it's OK. No worries at all. But if a time comes like the pandemic thing, we have to be ready with all the tools so that our students don't get lost in between. OK, so thank you. Thanks to uh, Suvarchala ma'am, the IQSC coordinator, co-coordinators, principal sir, then all the staff, everyone. So thanks for inviting me here. So I'm really happy coming here. So I saw so many bright faces. And after three years, this is the first physical class with the teachers. <laughs> so I'm so excited. As soon as ma'am told, I thought I'll say yes, because it's the physical class. So it's so nice to be with, uh, here, seeing the campus and all. So thanks a lot, everyone, um, and have a good day. Bye.
थैंक यू मैम मैं नाउ रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर सुचना रानी कोऑर्डिनेटर टीचिंग लर्निंग सेंटर बीवीसी टू गिव कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क thank you so much lavanya um a very good afternoon to everybody present here uh, thank you so much uh, dr p himabindu ma'am for uh, gracing this occasion and also accepting the invitation and um, uh, truly appreciate uh, the total 3 hours engaging the total crowd with a uh, lot of information and uh, definitely as you informed us we would definitely implement and especially we are really fascinated with all the tools which you have suggested so that we will definitely work on those areas and um, make sure that uh, the total uh, college is equipped with the tools with respect to the e content development truly appreciated ma'am thank you so much for uh, gracing this occasion and also accepting our invitation thank you so much appreciated ma'am and uh, this is a instra uh, information for all the faculty members uh, tomorrow we are uh, going for uh, ramakrishna mat uh, visit and uh, uh, um, and uh, sanjeev rao sir is uh, coordinating this total program the total visit and uh, the details of the program will be uh, forwarded in team bhavans by nirmati ma'am and uh, with the uh, youtube link which will be posted uh, in for the online uh, participants also so this is with respect to the inculcation of human values and ethics and also uh, the role of teachers and a uh, lot of eminent personalities will be addressing the audience and the participants both through online and offline mode so the details will be posted shortly and instructions will be provided regarding the same in a, in, sh in a short while with respect to the schedule at all so thank you it's a full day program uh, 9 to 4 o'clock uh, so all the the details regarding that uh, the dress code everything will be informed and uh, it will be posted so kindly adhere to the same and it is uh, it will be posted in just a short while so thank you so much once again have a great day yeah please no please no late coming special instructions from the coordinator uh, here uh, sanjeev rao sir please uh, be sure that uh, be there by sharp 9 o'clock so that the session starts and then uh, we have an amazing enriching session as well just like today thank you so much once again have a great day all of you